Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Pillars of Eternity with me, Break It Dawn. Sure. Continue exploring Whitestone Hollow. I will take this path this time. What's he saying? Think them swirly symbols mean anything? So you'll never find out, will you? Yeah. Quiet. Step lightly. I'm gonna do this in a while. Change our formation just to be set. Oh, bears. That'll do. Snow bears. Thing was abysmal. <laughs> Riona's Breastplate. Sides with Monk, Paladin, or Chanter. Okay, I think we'll give this to Palagina. Plus their Intellect. Grants Litany against Minor Afflictions, one per rest. And it's exceptional. This dark green enameled steel breastplate was a property of Riona, an adventurer who hailed from the Valian Republics and found her calling running with expedition companies in the Deerwood. A small amount of copper chain extends under the breastplate for additional protection. Riona ended her career early after giving up her expedition group to a dragon in the White March in exchange for her own life. Yeah. I'll see what's ahead. And I guess I could give it to my main character since he's also a paladin. I'm hoping to find some breastplates plates are medium. Make sure this one isn't uniquely heavy. I'm still medium. I'm hoping to uh. find uh, heavy soulbound armor. Still don't see why. I want to hurt them. All right, it's a handful of these guys. Ah. 
Yeah, he's made a mistake, buddy. <laughs> he thought the druid was going to be easy pickings. We got bad news for you. It's a little tougher than anticipated. Alright, Executioner's Hood. Uh, plus 20 endurance per kill. Plus 5 melee accuracy for 5 seconds when missed by an attack. Grants intimidating presence passive. Pretty useful. It doesn't provide any stats. All my current headgear provides some sort of stats. Which I prefer. Oh, except, I guess this one doesn't. But he's also not on the front line. So he'll get as much use out of that hood. Uh, did I pick it up? Okay, uh, the inland town of Lachan and the Deadfire Archipelago sat in the middle of a network of wealthy port cities and received the worst elements from all of them. Gamblers, thieves, and other miscreants trickled into Lachan and ruined the sleepy village through various acts of vandalism and violence. At last, the mayor of Lachan had enough. She appointed village executioners who had standing orders to kill anyone out on the streets after sundown. Executioners wore brightly colored hoods so that residents and visitors could recognize them and get safely inside. Hmm. Right. Not a sound. Margaret's fire casts light in dark places. And what does the flame reveal? That's right, I need to keep an eye out. There's a bounty around here somewhere, and the last bounty humbled me. Uh, so I might go ahead and rest up. Grab this uh, camping supplies here.
These glyphs seem similar to those seen in the battery, but they are too worn to make out. I have heard some thumping in the background. My cat was, uh... Knocking his cat tree against the wall. Yeah. Okay, so the Greater Earth Blights are not immune to crushing damage. They will be... I have to focus real quick. Uh, they're going to be focused by... Uh. Um, Herobius. Try that again. Alright, see so a couple more spells out. Um uh, well is always a good option. Where is the spell that gives a boost to might? Here we go. Get him, buddy. Mm-hmm. Alright, the Caravan Master's Brooch. Uh, the Brooch of Caravan Master is safe hole. He found frozen in the center of the Terror of Whitestone Hollow. Alright, two more blights, uh. and he is all set. Well, for the next upgrade. <laughs> what was the uh, first one for his? I think it tells me. Hmm. Oh, almost missed that. Pietro's formal footwear. Plus three lore grants corrals once per encounter. Well, items of the spirits. Okay. And plus four dexterity. 
According to old Valian folk tales, Pietro was a young tailor from a poor village who dreamed of attending the Magiverno Ball at the Imperial Palace. However, however, though he had made many fine clothes for himself, he had no shoes to match, no invitation from the Imperial family, and no knowledge of palace manners. One day, a kindly wizard heard his wish and gifted him with an enchanted pair of shoes. They were formal enough for the ball, and the wizard promised that they would provide all Vietro needed in time. Vietro took the wizard at his word and arrived at the palace gates the day of the ball, dressed in his best clothes and his new shoes. The guards on duty demanded Vietro's invitation, and suddenly, the young man felt a weight in his pocket. He, had, he found a flask of fine spirits, which he gave the guards in exchange for entry. Continuing to the ball, he found himself in conversation with several Becicontes and Marchesos. Pietro was certain his ignorance would betray him, but he spoke with such knowledge of history and custom that his hosts were impressed. His confidence in the wizard's shoes grew, and when he saw the most beautiful woman at the ball, he asked her to dance. The shoes guided his feet and his tongue, and such was his charm that he and the young princess were wed by the year's end. Yeah. Yeah, plus four to dexterity is no small... Alright, so we may be able to go ahead and make the change I wanted to make. Go ahead and grab this. Do you have dexterity anywhere else? I think she did. Oh, that's worthwhile or not. Um, yes, yeah, so I've been planning on swapping to the White Crest armor. I was hesitant to because of the uh, move speed reduction, but I can use boots of speed and negate that and still gain movement speed. I'm not going to upgrade it yet. Well, I might go ahead and upgrade it to um, Superb. This costs one of my two Audra Dragon Scales, so I'm a little hesitant. I think it'll be fine. And this I want to give to Manea, I think. I mean, I do like the bonus healing she gets from this and the move speed. But she is a little squishy. And if she gets an extra casting, or two extra castings of Frenzy with this, technically, as long as she takes critical hits. I think she benefits from having that. Plus three intellect, which does not stack with this. It overrides it. But it does match. Hmm. We'll figure it out. Yeah. I need a new cape too. This doesn't really match anymore. So that is a really good cape. I haven't read about it yet. This is part of the optimization yeah. process. I'm going to go through here uh, shortly, before we fight the dragon. Now, this pale rough stone doesn't resemble any other formation in the area. Margrin's fire casts light in dark places. 
Okay, why not? So here's the barn that was burned down. Embers still smolder in these blackened ruins. Apart from a few flecks of soot, the supplies on this cart are untouched. in the back the cape looks a little better it has that uh iconography on it let's go oh. hmm? That might be in a little bit of trouble. Oh, okay. <laughs> There's a few more up here than I was expecting. Oh gosh. Alright, uh, let's get this resurrect off. Salvo! Ah. She's still doing pretty good on her own. this uh, momentum going. Uh, easy peasy. <laughs> Alrighty. 
here. Why is she still stealth? She doesn't have any effects on her right now. Yeah. After Rick was assault, which flame reveal. she always has on, and she doesn't look like that. Uh, the upper edge of this engraved slab has been worn smooth by the hands of travelers, eager for some good luck. There's nothing up here to find. I find that hard to believe. Good thing I'm freshly greased. Actually, you know what? Let's head back to town and turn in this bounty. We only have a few minutes to kill, and I don't want to start this cave yet. Even though I have no idea how big it's going to be. It also gives us a chance to rest at the inn and get that buff back. Realized I can have an arbalist equipped. Let's equip this. All right, no, maybe I should save this for yeah. Let's just save this for Akana instead. Instead, I want to equip. Where's it at? Oh, we had it. Maybe someone has it equipped. I guess I don't have anything else equipped right now. Oh, she might offer more bounties too. Alright, uh, the Terror of Whitestone Hollow has been dealt with. Good to know this one's taken care of. Shame we lost all those people. But at least we'll finally be able to get some workers out there to clear up that avalanche. Here's the reward, as promised. Had some new reports come in. Thought you might be interested. Hoped, anyway. There's a group of Lagu Faith causing trouble in Whitestone Hollow. Like the avalanche wasn't bad enough, right? Then there's a pirate, Greenlod, that the Fangs want dead. Now I'll take on the Lagu Faith. Earned a little nickname for themselves Redwater Lagu Faith. On account, these little charmers drag their prey under the water. They turned up in Whitestone Hollow recently, and have been menacing the locals. Plenty of coin in it for the one who takes them out. Tell me more about this pirate, Breenlaud. A cipher from the Dead Pirate... Dead Pyre? <laughs> dead Fire Archipelago. He kind of swings onto his ship, and convinces the entire crew to drown themselves. Apparently, Breenlaud heard some stories about the kind of treasures that turn up in Anguithin Ruins. He's come inland. The Fangs sent their best warriors after Brynlod after he poached a few temples. 
but they didn't put a scratch on him. Word is Brynlod was last spotted around Deerford Crossing. Bring me Brynlod's head, and you can collect on the payment the Fangs are offering. Ooh. Oh, this is done. My grieving mother traveled and inquired all over the Eastern Reach to track down the missing monks. One by one, monks came across grieving mother's path in a variety of forms. Some kith, some beasts, some in unique forms. Having apparently forgotten why they had set out on their meditation, the monks engaged grieving mother in a protracted series of philosophical conversations. Ultimately, each monk traveled back through the mental labyrinths they had created triggering a spontaneous realization and subsequent molting back into their original form. When they had all returned to their monastery, they presented Grieving Mother with a chime. Each monk had donated one of the chime's twelve bells to the final instrument. Twelve uses, friendly aura, invisible, immune to engagement, untargetable, and break engagements for six seconds. This beautiful chime was created by the twelve monks of the Iglaki, or Ixlaki, whom he rescued from their mental labyrinths. Each time possesses the ability to turn the user invisible once. Pretty cool. Alright, so let's rest up, uh, get this buff back. Next episode, we're going to head back to Whitestone Hollow, take care of the bounty, uh, clear that cave, and hopefully rescue Mila. And then we'll go to Deerford Crossing and take care of the pirate. Back to warm your hand. Top quality. Oh yeah, I can't forget about this guy. So on our way back from the other bounty, we'll probably swing by Cadnua, or we'll swing by Cadnua on the way to the other bounty. Probably makes more sense. Alright, I'm going to call it here. Uh, next episode, we'll track down the bounty in Whitestone Hollow, uh, clear the cave, take out the other bounty, hopefully. Based on the um, Mogrin's Faithful bounty, <laughs> it might not go that, that simply. By the way, for now, thanks for watching. I hope to see you guys in the next one.